A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Monday, February 7. Argentina's President Alberto Fernandez touched down at the Granley Adams International Airport this afternoon in preparation for talks with Prime Minister Mia Motley tomorrow. The two leaders are expected to discuss matters of mutual interest across the Caribbean and Central and South America. Fernandez, the chairman of the Community of Latin American and Caribbean States, CELAC, is expected to see firsthand some of the measures Barbados has in place to address issues related to climate change. Director of Caribbean Affairs with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Argentina, Gustavo Pandiani, stressed closer cooperation between CELAC partners is important. Latin America and the Caribbean, we are not the most powerful area of the world. We need to deal with Europe, we need to deal with North America, we need to deal with China. So why are not working together? It doesn't make sense to me not to do it. So to answer your question, why we do it? Because we need to be together to be stronger. So when we have to deal, let's say we have to negotiate a trade agreement with China, or a trade agreement with the US, or a trade agreement with the Europeans, if we do it together, as a whole organization with more market, with more consumers, with more, more production, with more territories, with more everything, we are going to be in a better situation to negotiate. So we need to keep as together as possible in order then to be stronger when we talk outside of our own region. With over 12,000 people in home isolation as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, authorities on Monday announced the establishment of two assessment centres to provide more assistance to affected patients. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital said an assessment and urgent care centre and an assessment and isolation centre will go into operation from tomorrow. The Belleville Assessment and Urgent Care Centre will be located at the 48 Sparman Hospital in 6th Avenue, Belleville, St. Michael. This will function as a hybrid facility to assess and manage those currently in the home isolation program whose conditions worsen, as well as those who require a more hands-on physical medical consultation. Meanwhile, the second centre, named the Frank Walcott Assessment and Isolation Centre, situated at the Frank Walcott Labour College in Mangrove St. Philip, will provide assessment services to persons in home isolation whose conditions deteriorate. This centre will also function as an isolation facility for persons residing in the parishes of St. John, Christchurch and St. Philip, who require continued care. The QEH, however, pointed out that walk-ins will not be accommodated at both facilities and admission to these centres will only be facilitated through the Ministry of Health and Wellness's Operations Centre. In the latest COVID-19 update, a total of 419 persons tested positive for COVID-19 on Sunday from the 1,563 tests carried out by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprise 91 persons under the age of 18 and 328 who were 18 years and older. There were 140 people in isolation facilities, while 12,077 were in home isolation. The death toll remains at 286. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 147,716 persons. That's 54.5% of the total population or 64.7% of the eligible population. The eligible population represents those persons who are 12 years and older. Education Minister Kay McConney has not only heard the calls of scores who protested at the weekend to press government to act on its plans to reopen schools on February 21, but she says every effort is being made to stick to the plan. She made the comments while speaking to reporters this morning following the groundbreaking ceremony for a new 200-meter five-lane track at the Springer Memorial School. I am very happy that we live in a country where people can feel that they can freely express what their concerns are and I therefore commend the initiative that has been taken by those persons who thought that they needed so to do. Um, the Ministry of Education, as you are fully aware, has already made our statement, we made that statement last week, that we are intent on working across government and with all of our partners to see how it is best for us to get to a February 23rd return to 20, 21st face-to-face um, -face return to school. And so, again, my simple comment is bravo to those who have seen it fit to exercise their democratic right and in a country that is free. And do know that we're looking forward to working with all of them 
to see how best we can make it to February 31st, 21st, successfully. The Springer Memorial School is set to become the first school on the island to have an athletic training track. Minister of Education Kay McConney says physical education should not be relegated to just games on the curriculum. She says students in a well-structured physical education program reap the benefits. On are the days when our physical education activities were limited to running around the track and executing some star jumps, doing two push-ups and kicking a ball. We know only too well of the financial gains in sports and the tremendous benefits professional athletes are able to realize as a result of engagement in high quality physical education programs like the ones we have here at Springer Memorial. We are also, we also know of the many careers in sports, whether you are talking about sports medicine, physicians, kinesiologists, exercise physiologists, facilities managers, nutritionists, the list goes on. And these are professions and careers that are available in front and behind the scenes in sports. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues, and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in Jamaica, farmers in Portland are reeling from the impact of last week's heavy rains, which destroyed their crops. More on this report from Television Jamaica. In the fields of banana crops and a few coconut trees hanging in the balance. Farmers in Siemens Valley spent months growing their crops and in just two days, with no warning, flash flooding wiped out all they've planted. I did look for this. I did really look for this. Rainfall and the water run might be one look, look a drain come up and wash through and look apart. Nothing to speak of because enough. Then time they no banana, no banana and I drop down or the amount of debris, but now, I tell you. Well, this you cannot prepare for. You can't prepare for this because you go to your bed and everything look alright and by daylight everything just gone. Because the river then come down bank to bank and just destroy everything. Farmers are now unaware of how to move forward. I set me about a couple months well. Because you know banana take months to come. At least you now I have to get some fertilizer and stuff to push back these that here to see if I can get some more bearing. So basically it's gonna push me back like maybe I'll one, one five, six months. From from me happen me can't come like me can't even make a move. Can't make a move because I have to think if the rain will come down back again and do the same thing. Although some farmers were visited by a field officer from the Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA last week, they are appealing for assistance. But I love to get some help. I don't know where I get it from, but I love to get some help. Rather, council, MP, anybody who can come on board and give me some help because I have to spend a lot of money to bring it back. On the international scene in Canada, an Ontario judge has granted a 10 day injunction to prevent protesting truckers in downtown Ottawa from honking their horns incessantly. The truckers have been protesting against COVID 19 restrictions. Emergency Preparedness Minister Bill Blair has also called for the protests to end. Many of the actions that have taken place over the course of this demonstration have been unlawful and, frankly, disrespectful to the rights and, and, and freedoms of all Canadians. It is well past the time to bring this protest to an end. Canada is a peaceful nation, and we are often serve as an example of hope to countries around the world. And we look after our neighbors, and we treat each other with respect in this country. We do not threaten or intimidate our fellow citizens. We do not desecrate the National War Memorial. 
We don't dishonor statues dedicated to national heroes. And we do not tolerate individuals who wave flags riddled with symbols of hate and discrimination. The freedom to engage in lawful, peaceful assembly and process is, is a fundamental charter right. However, when an event is no longer peaceful, when the event is disrupting the lives and jeopardizing the livelihoods of fellow Canadians, local residents have been harassed, harassed for wearing masks, business owners have been forced to close out of concern for the safety of their staff, families with young children have been able to sleep due to the constant honking of horns. And this frankly needs to end. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.